Greetings, folks. Welcome back to my little corner of the library. Today on the show, we're going to be discussing one of the more prolific and decorated soldier scholars in all of American history. My name's Dan, you're watching Bookworm History, and this is The Passing of the Armies by General Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. Joshua Chamberlain was born September 8, 1828, in Brewer, Maine, the oldest of five children. He would go on to attend Bowdoin College and later earn a position there as a professor of rhetoric. By 1861, in the outbreak of the American Civil War, Chamberlain was still teaching at Bowdoin, having advanced to a professor of modern languages, of which he could read and write seven. In 1862, Chamberlain was granted a leave of absence by Bowdoin to go to Europe to study languages further. However, he only made it as far as Augusta, the state capital. Chamberlain was deeply concerned about the conflict between the North and the South, and he volunteered for service in the Union Army. His qualifications, along with the uh, current shortage of troops and qualified men to lead them, earned Chamberlain a commission as a lieutenant colonel of the newly formed 20th Maine Regiment. In May of 1863, Chamberlain was promoted to full colonel of the 20th Maine, and was leading this regiment on July 2nd, 1863, in, it, in what has become its most famous action, the Battle of Little Round Top, a part of the Battle of Gettysburg. Chamberlain and his actions on the, the days of July 1st to July 3rd uh, were later uh, made famous and uh, somewhat romanticized by Michael Shara in the book The Killer Angels, uh, as well as by Jeff Daniels in his portrayal of Chamberlain in the movie Gettysburg. By 1864, Chamberlain had risen to command an entire brigade the 1st Brigade, 1st Division, 5th Army Corps, although he was still technically only a colonel. On June 18th of that year, he was leading his brigade on a disastrous attack on the defenses at Petersburg, where he was wounded, shot through both hips. It was feared that the wound was mortal and Chamberlain would not survive. When word reached 5th Corps Commander General Warren K. Governor that Chamberlain was mortally wounded, he immediately sent word to General Grant, requesting that Chamberlain be promoted to full Brigadier General. What followed in General Grant's own words, Colonel J. L. Chamberlain of the 20th Maine was wounded on the 18th. He was gallantly leading his brigade at the time as he had been in the habit of doing in all the engagements in which he had previously been engaged. He had several times been recommended for a brigadier generalcy for gallant and meritorious conduct. On this occasion, however, I promoted him on the spot and forwarded a copy of my order to the War Department asking that my act might be confirmed and Chamberlain's name sent to the Senate for confirmation without any delay. This was done, and at last a gallant and meritorious officer received partial justice at the hands of his government, which he had served so faithfully and so well. Despite being so badly wounded, Chamberlain survived. Being laid up for six months, he returned to active duty and command of his brigade in November of 1864. Now, the time period Chamberlain covers in the passing of the armies spans from March 29th to May 25th, 1865, uh, covering the entire month of April, uh, the, final, uh, the final days of the American Civil War, and Chamberlain and the Fifth Corps' participation in those events. He covers the Army of the Potomac's pursuit from Petersburg through Lewis's Farm, White Oaks, Five Forks, and ultimately to Appomattox Courthouse. On March 31st, Chamberlain was promoted to Brevet Major General, for service during the Battle of White Oak Road, where, though wounded, he led his brigade on to recover ground that had previously been lost. On April 9, 1865, Chamberlain was at the front when the first flag of truce came through the Confederate lines of Longstreet's Corps and into his division. Chamberlain goes on in the passing of the armies to describe the surrender itself and how he was selected, along with the rest of his division, to receive the formal surrender of the Confederate army. He ends the work by describing the Grand Army Review that took place uh, through Washington, D.C. on May 24th and 25th, an exhibition of uh, the victorious armies through the streets of the city, uh, an army review for the uh, newly uh, sworn-in President Andrew Johnson following the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. At the close of the war, Chamberlain had fought in over 20 engagements, was wounded six times, received multiple citations for bravery, and in 1893, in 1893 at the 30th anniversary of the Battle of Little Round Top, Chamberlain was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions on that day. 
1866, Chamberlain was elected the governor of Maine, where he would go on to serve four consecutive one-year terms. In 1876, he was elected the president of his old alma mater, Bowdoin College, a post he would serve in until 1883. A prolific writer and always active in veterans' organizations, Chamberlain passed away on February 24, 1914, from complications resulting from his wound received at Petersburg. Now, Chamberlain began writing The Passing of the Armies in 1908, and his purpose was twofold. On the one hand, he wanted to tell a faithful version of the events of the Fifth Corps on the last days of the war. He also wanted to write a vindication of Commanding General Governor Warren of the Fifth Corps, who was dismissed by Philip Sheridan in the final days of the war, uh, perceive, uh, as Chamberlain perceived quite unjustly. Uh, Chamber Chamberlain would uh, be one of the witnesses that would testify at Warren's later uh, court of inquiry, uh, thus vindicating Warren of any wrongdoing. Uh, however, the results of the commission wouldn't be published until after Warren's death. Now, Chamberlain himself would not live to see uh, the passing of the armies published. Though the work uh, was completed, uh, he died in 1914, and the book was not published until 1915. Uh, thus, it was uh, sort of uh, uh, robbed of the opportunity of a final, uh, a final look through by the author himself, and was instead published under the supervision of his children. Now, the Passing of the Armies contains two uh, passages that are uh, particularly moving or particularly detailed. Uh, the one is uh, the uh, final moments of uh, the war itself, essentially, uh, or the, the war uh, in the Eastern Theater, uh, where the surrender comes through the lines. The other is uh, Chamberlain's own acceptance of the surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia, uh, where, uh, despite uh, the troops uh, order to simply uh, carry arms, uh, Chamberlain uh, orders his entire division to salute the uh, surrendering Confederate troops, an action for which he would later receive much criticism. Uh, he goes on to justify his decision uh, very movingly in the book itself. Uh, I would, I'd read those passages for you. We're going to come out with a bonus video a little bit later in the week uh, with, with some of those passages. If I were to do that now, the video would get, uh, would get pretty long. So in the interest of, uh, of pithiness for this particular episode, we'll do that as kind of bonus content uh, for you guys later in the week. Chamberlain himself was a very prolific writer uh, for more uh, of his works, along with The Passing of the Armies, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you can also check out uh, Bayonet Forward, uh, My Civil War Remembrances. It's a collection of his writings and some of his speeches on uh, some of the different campaigns. It includes the Battle of Little Round Top in Gettysburg, but it also includes uh, his actions at, uh, at Fredericksburg, uh, as well as uh, Petersburg and Appomattox. Uh, you can also, if you want more information about Chamberlain himself, another excellent work is The Soul of the Lion. Uh, it's a biography of Chamberlain. Uh, it was published in 1960. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty quick read. It, it borders on worshipful at times, um, but, uh, but all the facts are there. The story is there, and it is a very good read. It's an excellent introduction if you're looking into uh, uncovering a little bit more of, uh, of the man behind, uh, behind the Killer Angels. Well, that's all we've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep an eye out later in the week for that bonus video with some of the passages from The Passing of the Army, some of the more emotional uh, emotional moments. Uh, his, his prose really is, is lovely uh, to read, um, and it, uh, it really just describes things in such a kind of over overwhelming emotional sense uh, while still maintaining that sort of sense of Victorian dignity. Uh, so keep an eye out for that later in the week. Uh, if you liked the video, do give us a big thumbs up uh, down below. Hit the subscribe button on your way out. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.